Um, well, thanks everybody. My name is Dr. Nettles. We're going to be doing this presentation tonight. We're going to be talking about the difference in direct versus indirect antioxidants. And this is the presentation you're going to hear. It's called The War Within Our Cells, Antioxidants versus Free Radicals. Now, most people are going to get somewhat of a paradigm change tonight because of the, the previous understanding that we've had of free radicals is what we now have subclassified as direct antioxidants. So we're going to go into that. First, I'm going to give this disclaimer here. The information provided in this presentation is intended for your general knowledge only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment for specific medical conditions. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. This information is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Never disregard medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you may see or hear in this presentation. So let's talk about some statistics. In the United States, the current population is 306,984,000 and change. That's how many people live here in America. But well, let's put some statistics in, in place here. Fact, according to the American Heart Association, there are 80,700,000 people in the United States, which is actually almost one in three, that's a typo, um, with cardiovascular disease. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. And in, in 2008, there was 200, or excuse me, 869,724 deaths from heart disease alone in this country alone. And the second fact there, according to the American Cancer Society, there were 2.5 million new cases of cancer in the United States in just 2008, including 1 million cases plus of skin cancer. And of those people, 565,650 Americans died of cancer in 2008. A year later, in 2009, my father joined that. He was diagnosed. And 13 years, 13 months later, rather, we were at his funeral. From first symptom to funeral was 13 months. So cancer is something that has really taken on a whole new meaning in my life. But let's look at some of the unfortunate truths about these two facts. Is that most of the people who died in those reference statistics were on prescription medication at the time of their death. So medicine is not the answer. We have these people that are dying and they're medicated and dying. So we have to look at something different. Well, what do these diseases, specifically cancer and heart disease, what do they have in common? The answer is the aging process. These are, these are diseases that are typically of the agent, and they're accelerated by oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the term used for free radical damage, excessive free radical damage. So why do we age? The prevailing theory now on the aging process is this free radical equation. Scientists agree that aging and most deadly diseases are the direct result of cellular deterioration due to destructive molecules called free radicals. Free radicals, they damage and they increase predictably as you go or as you age and it causes a condition known as oxidative stress. Again, advanced free radical damage is termed oxidative stress and it leads directly to over 200 diseases including diabetes, heart disease, cancer, depression, Alzheimer's, etc. That's a very small list. This is a very large issue here. So what can we do about this oxidative stress condition? What can we do to decrease it? The prevailing thought process out there, if you will, is antioxidants. Antioxidants are the solution, at least that what we have been taught. Question is, is what variety are we talking about? We just until recently did not know that there is a direct antioxidant and there's an indirect antioxidant. So supplements, which are direct antioxidants, and I'll get into that here in a second. Antioxidant supplements and antioxidant rich foods are everywhere and they're promoted heavily. When I say everywhere, they're literally, I would challenge you to walk through any shelf in your grocery store and look for something that contains antioxidants. They're everywhere, they're promoted very heavily but they're also promoted very ridiculously in my opinion. Looking at Diet Coke with antioxidants, wow. or Diet Cherry 7-Up with antioxidants, or green tea flavored Coca-Cola. Wow. These things are not health foods, and if you add antioxidants to them, it does not change that. And in fact, the pH level of these, I would, I would say in my opinion, would render these antioxidants useless anyway. So, but do they make a difference? Do antioxidants, in fact, make a difference in the free radical equation? The answer is yes, it, they do. But we have to understand how and where they work. So in order to answer the question, we really need to understand how, these, how they work and where their benefits are actually experienced. That would just be a question we would need to know. But well, we now know that free radicals are produced in the cell. And one of the things you can't see with the color here is that the, this, 
free radicals that are, therefore are needed in the cell. Antioxidants are needed in the cell because free radicals are actively affected in the cell. We need to get those antioxidants in there. But when we consume these antioxidants, these direct antioxidants, they're mostly present in the bloodstream and not within the cell. So we have to look for a different solution. We now know that antioxidants, like I said, they do in fact neutralize free radicals, but there's two types now. We understand there's a direct variety, which come from your fruits, your juices, and vitamins, etc. But there's also an indirect variety. They're antioxidant catalysts, the enzymes that are made by your cells. These indirect antioxidant uh, enzymes are produced in your cells as a, as a consequence, or as a solution, rather, to the free radical damage or the oxidative stress load of the person. And enzymes such as SOD, or superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione, and many, many others. So when our bodies don't eliminate these, these antioxidants, these free radicals, um, within the cell, we need to actually have the equation that is going to work. So direct antioxidants work within the cell. I'm going to use this. So in the presence of catalase, which is a direct or an indirect antioxidant produced by your cells, within the environment of your cells, when you have some hydrogen peroxide in the presence of catalase, it neutralizes it into water and oxygen. It actually neutralizes these free radicals within the cell by this enzyme that your body makes. We now know also that enzymes offer pure antioxidant protection as a balanced network. They do not produce oxidants. It's very important to make that distinction because things like vitamin C and vitamin E are actually creating free radicals. They are pro-oxidants. When we thought before they were antioxidants, but we now have in vivo studies, and I'm going to share a couple of them with you here, that show that these are actually pro-oxidants, not antioxidants. However, in green it appears it's not showing up in this. Um, one molecule of catalase can neutralize up to one million free radicals per second every second. And it's, it's actually in green, so you can't see that. Sorry about that. So what really works? We ha how do these direct antioxidant and indirect antioxidant approaches, how do they match up to one another? Well, it's on how they work, the ratio and how they work. Direct antioxidants like your juices, your fruits and vitamins, etc., they work on a one-to-one -one ratio, which means when you take these into your body and your body metabolizes them and breaks them down, one molecule of, say, a vitamin E will in fact neutralize one free radical. But you need now another one, so you need to keep consuming these things. The question is, is that does it work? Yes, in fact, it does work. It works very well on a one-to-one -one ratio. But when we're talking about indirect antioxidants, those enzymes that are made within your body, they work on a one to one million ratio, where one molecule of an antioxidant enzyme produced by your body will in fact neutralize one million free radicals per second, every second, the same enzyme, because it's a catalyst. It's not consumed as it is in the direct antioxidant approach. So how many free radicals are we talking about? We have to, we have to know that before we realize which one of these benefits is superior to the other. Well, the answer to how many free radicals our bodies produce in just one 24-hour period is staggering. It's 300 sextillion free radicals produced in one 24-hour period by one healthy individual. This is not someone who's diseased. This is not an ill person. This is a healthy person. And it's 300 sextillion, which is the number three, followed by 23 zeros. So now, let's evaluate those approaches. <coughs> The direct antioxidant approach is a one-to-one -one ratio. The indirect is a one-to-one -one million ratio. Let me go back. And again, the green doesn't show up. So when something is working on a one-to-one -one ratio, the direct antioxidants, let's talk about that. This is analogous to, say, a forest fire. That 300 sextillion free radicals is like the forest fire or a raging forest fire. And we know that water does, in fact, extinguish fire. There's no debate. There's no question. But if we have a cup full of water thrown onto a raging forest fire, it's not going to have any effect, though water does in fact extinguish fire. That's what would happen if you're using the direct approach, one to one million, or one to one, rather, it's not effective. Whereas the indirect approach, the one to one million, is like pouring that same cup of water on a single birthday candle. It's very effective, and it does in fact neutralize it, though it has been shown now in peer-reviewed studies by at least 40% up to 70% and 100% of people participating in taking ProTandem after just 30 days, this indirect approach. This is one of the studies where it talks about, this was actually the first um, vitamin C study that I came across. There's over 200. 
This says vitamin C prophylaxis promotes oxidative lipid damage during surgical ischemia and reperfusion. In essence, what it was saying is that vitamin C, when used to try to prevent free radical damage prior to a surgery, in fact created free radical damage. And this is one of over 200 papers showing the pro-oxidant effects of vitamin C, not the antioxidant effects of vitamin C. And this, you can find these on pubmed.gov, and there's many of them out there. So in this, this particular paper, in conclusion, the study demonstrated that vitamin C supplementation promoted iron-induced oxidative lipid damage. And a pretty, pretty impactful, pretty profound paper. This is another one published in JAMA on vitamin E on lipid peroxidation in healthy people. Uh, the results of this is there was no significant effect of vitamin E on levels of, of urinary 4-HNE or isoprostane was observed. The conclusion is the results question the rationale for vitamin E supplementation in healthy individuals with respect to free radical reduction. It's amazing here that we this is kind of going against what our prevailing thought process was just several years ago. So we now have some, some concrete published data to show the oxidative effects, the pro-oxidative effects of vitamin C and vitamin E. So um, this is the first paper that we have on protandum, which is the, it's actually, it says the induction of human superoxide dismutase and catalase in vivo. And I want to point that out, in vivo, very, very important. When we're dealing with studies in vivo and in vitro, in vitro is in a very controlled environment, in a laboratory where you're controlling the environment, where we have the, all of the studies prior to the previous two that I just showed you, were vitamin E and vitamin, uh, vitamin C studies that were in vitro in a very controlled environment. But when you put it into a human being, which is adapting, is undergoes stress and undergoes all kinds of other things that where the body is adapting constantly, it has the exact opposite effect. So this was the first study on protandum, where it was published in the Journal of Free Radical Biology and Medicine and showed that it reduced oxidative stress by 40 to 70% after just 30 days in 100% of people participating. This was the ABC primetime special, and I don't necessarily need to, we probably most of everybody has, everybody seen that ABC primetime video? No, it was on YouTube, Sean's channel. Okay, so um, just for sake of time, and we got to start a little late, I would go ahead and pass this up, but it aired on June 2nd, 2005. If you go to YouTube, type in pro tandem ABC primetime video, you'll watch it, it's a nine minute video. Uh, well, this is the formulator of pro tandem, Dr. Joseph McCord. He actually helped launch the study of antioxidants in 1969 while he was a grad student at Duke University working on his thesis. He co-discovered free radical biology while discovering superoxide dismutase. In fact, he discovered the enzyme, the, the human enzyme superoxide dismutase and was nominated four times for the Nobel Prize in Medicine for that discovery. Well, he has yet to receive the Nobel Prize, but he did receive the Elliott Crescent Medal in 1997 for the same discovery for the discovery of biology of free radical reactions in living organisms. And that award, which he received in 1997, has also been given to Alexander Graham Bell for his discovery of the telephone, and Henry Ford for the automobile, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, other people, diesel for the diesel engine, and Orville Wright for, the, for, a, for an airplane. The award is, met, or is issued for somebody scientifically or through other measures has discovered something that would transform human life. So a, a major, major shift in advancement of the human species, and Dr. McCord received it in 1997. He's currently the professor of medicine at the University of Colorado, and he's the formulator of Protan and Dr. Joseph McCord. So we have peer-reviewed scientific scrutiny. This is the one thing that I think is, uh, that sets ProTandem aside from other, other supplements. It's got six published studies currently. There's 26 that are underway at universities across the world. And they are, private, they, are, they are independently initiated studies and independently funded studies. These have nothing to do with the corporation. They are studied by these universities. Most, most of them came as a result of that first study, which was published in the Journal of Free Radical Biology and Medicine here, as you see. Um, but we now have a study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association called Circulation. We have another two studies out of Louisiana State University published on skin cancer. And we also have a, published, a study that was just published and conducted at Harvard on muscular dystrophy. These are tier one peer-reviewed published research studies, which in the supplement world is really unheard of, especially with something like this, where there's actually scientific evidence and scientific scrutiny to back it up. It's not just anecdotal evidence or testimonials. So why is protandum so effective? And the, the reason is, is because it has a combination of chemicals, phytochemicals that signal the body's genes to produce their own antioxidant enzymes. And it actually works through a process called synergism. We've got a study I'm going to show you here a little bit later. But the natural process produced these enzymes by the millions, 
and they're millions of times stronger and more efficient than the current conventional antioxidant approaches that we're taking currently, these direct antioxidants. That's why it's so effective. It's just a million times more strong. This is the study that we are, this was our second study. This was the synergistic induction of heme oxygenase 1 by the components of antioxidant supplement Protandum. What this is, this is analogous to a recipe. And I, I talk with this, talk with people when I share with this, is that let's take bread, for example. Bread has five ingredients. Our product also has five ingredients. So those, those ingredients in our product are green tea, milk thistle, ashwagandha, bacopa, and turmeric. It's not the five ingredients necessarily, because there's really, I mean, they're all neat, but there's nothing really unique or special about any one of them individually. It's the combination, the synergism that they bring. Like bread, as I said, bread is flour, water, eggs, yeast, and butter. If you throw all of those ingredients in any proportion you think of, and you mix them together and throw them in an oven at 375 degrees, you may or may not get bread, because it's not about the ingredients, it's about the percentages, or the proportions of those ingredients. Like say, if you follow a recipe and you leave an egg out, or you double the water, or you remove the butter, you're not going to get what you want. It's the difference in the outcome has everything to do with the individual components and their percentages, and that was clearly demonstrated here in this study. This is pretty amazing. And what, what they showed in the study was that protandum, the synergy of protandum, the five ingredients, is actually 18 times stronger than the components individually added up, the sum of their components. So that's what created the synergy, which is the second published paper here, in the, again, in the Journal of Free Radical Biology and Medicine. So as healthcare costs continue to rise, are you going to spend a little money towards obtaining good health or a large amount of money to treat bad health once you own it? This is one of the things that this is a, a kind of a common sense question, but our, as our discussion was, we were talking about the, the, this evening before we started the process here, is that people are most of the time uneducated or they're apathetic. The thing is they need information. And when we have the information to show them and it's scientifically backed, they can now choose to do things that are going to give them a greater health outcome or they can wait and, and be apathetic and be ignorant and just pay for their surgery to have an organ removed or be drugged. And it's really up to them. The key is that it's much more, it's much more cost effective to prevent a problem than it is to treat it once you've got it. And they get a, that's just common sense. So for best results, it's recommended for one tablet per day of protandum. And one bottle of protandum contains 30 tablets. This is a month's supply. One of the other things that we're talking about with regard to wellness practices or health practices is affordability. And I can't tell you how frustrated I get when people tell me they can't afford to eat organic or they can't afford to buy free-range chicken. They can't abort, afford to buy organic eggs. They can't afford to buy these things. So what they do is they buy the factory farm stuff. They buy the unhealthy stuff. Or they take their kids through the drive through at McDonald's and they get a Happy Meal because it is very much more affordable, unfortunately, to eat unhealthy, but this is the kind of thing, is that when something is affordable and it's scientifically backed and it's been proven effective, it kind of takes that argument away. And a price point is very effective. It's only $40 per month plus tax and shipping. And all you really need to do to begin taking this is to fill out an application or go online and do it yourself. But the issue here is effectiveness, scientific backing, understanding, and affordability. The price point is fantastic with this. So there you go. Questions? Anybody have any questions?